to the shop, Founder Friday edition. Today we're talking with Matt Valletto, founder of Water Avenue Coffee in Portland, Oregon. Hey everybody, and welcome to Keys to the Shop, where we give you insights, inspiration, and the tools you need to grow as a coffee service professional. Uh, Today is Founder Friday. As always, on the last Friday of every month, we get to talk with founders and owners of some of the world's best coffee bars and coffee businesses. It's really just been a fantastic time doing these episodes because we learn so much from the lived experiences and the lessons, the ups and downs of entrepreneurship from these great founders. And today is no exception. Today, Matt Maletto from Water Avenue Coffee in Portland, Oregon is here with us. And Matt is a longtime friend of mine. So I'm so happy to have him on the show. He is truly a great example of a leader who has not only built a great business, but also builds community through the business. And we get into that in this episode and more. So I'm excited for this. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Prima Coffee. Prima Coffee is a specialty coffee equipment supplier, and they are based out of Louisville, Kentucky, right here where the show is based. And uh, from the beginning of their company, they've set out to make the best coffee brewing equipment available to the general public. And their focus is to curate the best equipment for every need. That goes for grinders, espresso machines, undercounter refrigeration, hot water towers, uh, you name it. They have what you need, especially if you want to open a shop and you're wondering what the right gear is for your situation. That's what they specialize in. Um, They've got the expertise to help you make those kinds of decisions. And uh, I've always enjoyed working with them. A great group of of people for sure. So go to prima-coffee.com and find out how they can help you get the right gear to fit your situation. And my thanks to Prima for their support of Keys to the Shop. So this episode is also brought to you by Pacific Foods. Now they are the folks behind the Pacific Barista Series line of non-dairy performance beverages. And those are designed specifically for baristas, and the standards for excellence that they demand. So whether it's almond, soy, coconut, rice, or oat milk, it doesn't matter. Their ability to take the heat of steaming, produce a really amazing silky texture, and keep the flavor balance of the beverage focused on coffee, those reasons and more make it a perfect choice for your cafe's menu. So you're talking about also a company that's a huge supporter of the specialty industry and producing products like this is just one of the ways they demonstrate their passion for specialty coffee. So I would encourage you go to pacificfoods.com and see how the barista series line of non-dairy performance beverages can help elevate the non-dairy offerings in your cafe. Thank you very much Pacific for your support of Keys to the Shop. All right, so today we are talking with Matt Maletto of Water Avenue Coffee. Matt has extensive experience in retail coffee. He's opened and managed multiple coffee houses. Uh, Matt has personally trained more than 2,500 new coffee retail business owners and barista trainers and managers over the past 20 years. Um, He regularly speaks at Coffee Fest the SCA, and other industry trade shows and has been quoted in numerous uh, newspapers and industry magazines, including the Wall Street Journal. Matt is the current president of the Oregon Coffee Board and a recipient of Portland Business Journal's 2018 40 Under 40 Award. Through Bellissimo Coffee Advisors, he founded BaristaExchange.com and has been a head judge for the Coffee Fest Latte Art Competitions as well. Now, Matt is the director and developer of OnlineBaristaTraining.com, and he coordinates all consulting services with Bellissimo's clients and past graduates. And in 2009, Matt partnered with his father, Bruce Maletto, to open Water Avenue Coffee, Portland's premier micro-roaster and retail coffee operation. So in this discussion today, we talk about Matt growing up in the world of coffee. We talk about the consulting and training uh, side of running Bellissimo Coffee Advisors, um, the dynamic of having taught and helped so many to open their own shops and run so many shops, and then 
opening your own shop. It's a very interesting dynamic. Um, Matt lays out extremely valuable tips and insights from an unmatched body of uh, work and experience that is absolutely going to help you in your coffee operation. This is also a great discussion about community and collaborations, which, as I mentioned in the beginning, is one of the calling cards of Water Avenue Coffee. This is just a really rich discussion with Matt, and I'm thrilled to have gotten to talk with him. And I have no doubt you'll walk away from this conversation inspired and equipped to do great work. Uh, Here now is my conversation with my good friend, Matt Maletto. Hi, Matt Maletto. Welcome to Keys to the Shop. I'm really excited to have you on the show. Hey, Chris. Thanks so much. I'm super excited to be here. Well, you know, it's uh, it's been. I feel like it's been a long time coming because, uh, Lord knows, uh, you've been in the industry for so long, um, giving so much, and there's a lot to talk about in in what you've accomplished over the years. And so, I'm excited to dive into that a little bit today. And I wanted to talk about we're we're talking about Water Avenue Coffee today. But the story of Water Avenue Coffee is, uh, you know, way older than that. It goes back to, you know, the experiences of, you know, starting a coffee school and, you know, building it to being one of the nation's leading or the nation's leading coffee school. Um, I wonder if you can give us, for you, a synopsis of your unique upbringing in this world of coffee. Absolutely. Um you know, it's kind of funny. Sometimes I'll be, you know, meeting someone for the first time and they, they learn I'm in the coffee industry. And actually it happened last week. I was in the dentist chair getting my teeth cleaned and not the easiest time to talk, but the woman cleaning my teeth says, oh, you're in coffee. Well, how'd you get into coffee? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm like, I, uh, <laughs> it's a long, a long journey as you know, but, um, you know, I took a trip to Italy with my dad uh, when I was about 10 years old and we spent a month, uh, kind of backpacking and traveling. And that was kind of my first memorable coffee experience, drinking cappuccinos and, uh, kind of fell in love. And, and, uh, you know, fast forward when, when Bruce was getting into the coffee industry, a lot of his passion came from that kind of culture and and coffee model in Italy that was somewhat non-existent in the U S uh, so at an early age, a teenager, 14, 15 years old, I, I was working as a barista in uh, coffee carts and cafes that Bruce had started and fell in love, obviously, with the, the continued, you know, love of coffee and as my, you know, young palate developed, but really with that customer interaction and community side and the, you know, idea of a kind of a daily routine for people and being in a very early stage of of retail coffee here in the U S. Um, so that passion extended through a lot of food service jobs as bartending. I've worked in, you know, restaurants, uh, back of house, and obviously also some management in coffee bars and had managed multiple cafes. Um, went to college, managed coffee bars through college, spent a year studying in Italy again, in 1999, 2000, and uh, came back with a you know a, a focus in art and photography throughout college, and got into web design and kind of pivoted the you know the coffee journey a bit and was doing a lot of websites for espresso machine companies and kind of through Bellissimo, and finally an opportunity came to kind of move into uh, some consulting and take over uh, a position with Bellissimo that uh, obviously turned into a partnership with my dad, starting the school, um, et cetera. So I uh, have always just loved the coffee industry because it's allowed me so many different paths, um, and I'm still on that journey today. So was there uh, a time where you kind of were thinking about leaving the coffee industry? Like, I don't know if this is for me, even though it's, you know, the family business, so to speak. Uh, This is now, when when did it become like Matt's journey and not just like what you were doing because it was, it was there? Sure. Well, I've always been very interested in technology and uh, I had a small, uh, small company with three other guys in Eugene, Oregon doing 
web design, catalog design, again, primarily for copy uh, companies, but we also were developing instant messaging software and some back end that uh, when we dissolved that business and, uh, you know, I went full time into coffee, uh, the guys from that company had moved down to LA and fly me down for parties and whatnot as their company grew. And uh, we'll just say that they did very well with a, a buyout three years later. And at that moment, I said, all right, I'm uh, fully committed and, and I'm going to do what I can to be innovative in the coffee industry uh, and continue to evolve. Um, but again, it's that passion for such an amazing product that keeps me, you know, just going every day and the ability to explore uh, so many areas of coffee, uh, probably like a lot of other coffee professionals, is what keeps us excited, you know, and integrated into work and life and, and uh, opportunity. But um, that was probably a pivotal moment when I uh, moved full time into coffee and decided to uh, really work to my potential given other areas of expertise and background. Cool. Glad you did. Good to have you. Um, <laughs> after like running coffee shops for so long and then running coffee schools where coffee shops you know, or coffee shops to be would get educated and you've launched so many, you've seen so much over the course of the years, like what prompted you to start Water Avenue Coffee? Like what was the genesis of starting a coffee shop of your own? Sure. So for so many years, you know, we, and still today, we've stayed very true to the mission of Bellissimo Coffee Advisors. And it's simply that we help people succeed in specialty coffee. And uh, 2008, 2009, you know, like many businesses, uh, we were, you know, uh, feeling the effects of a down economy. Mm. Less and less people were opening businesses um with bellissimo and the school being a you know fairly you know unique and volatile type of business focused just on education um we saw a really great opportunity in the building that houses the school to open uh not just a coffee bar but also uh, a small roastery and we really decided to diversify a bit um, and get back into living and breathing, you know, retail and, and roasting uh, alongside those that we're helping in business. We had been very sensitive in the past to not, you know, compete or f seem unbiased in what we do by trying to sell a product. But Water Avenue really quickly became the really authentic local focused business to where it's a really positive extension, I feel, to our position as educators in the industry to really be not just consultants who used to have a shop or, you know, had a varied background, but we're living right alongside those who were teaching. Uh, it's also been great because it's kept a true local authentic focus for Water Avenue. Ninety percent or more uh, of our coffee that's roasted is hand delivered within a 50 mile radius of our roastery. So it's nice, allowed us nice. to keep a model that uh, I think has uh, really helped Water Avenue be sustainable. Um, but with, you know, the evolution of coffee in Portland, with close to probably 200 roasters here, it's really allowed us to create a uh, authentic and sustainable path as well as focusing only locally to support our long-term relationships. That's incredible. I didn't realize that it was up to like 200 that, I mean, that's when people talk about a saturated market and they think, Oh my goodness, I don't know if I want to open. There's so many coffee bars in my city. It's like, uh, <laughs> have you seen Portland? Wow. Was that, I mean, were, was that a huge concern for you going in, knowing probably better than anybody, uh, the lay of the land? I, I remember going on tours when I was uh, like a guest instructor with the coffee school of years and years ago, going on these tours with students of all the roasteries and thinking to myself, even back then, like, wow, there's right. so much. Yeah, I mean, Portland's a 
pretty magical place and has been a true epicenter, I feel, for independent, you know, coffee, retail and roasting and a lot of great pioneers uh, here in, in Portland have helped, you know, disrupt the market a little bit. And we've seen a lot of great companies. I think that even in the last two, three years, the access to not only information, but uh, the access to connecting with the roasting process has become potentially more available. So we're seeing a lot of places that are roasting, even if it's for their one, two, three locations, Mm -hmm. you know, which is great. You know, we're all for it. And even with Water Avenue, we've had uh, more than a few accounts that have been great wholesale partners, but then the time has come where they want to start roasting their own coffee and and we try to support them in that journey uh, rather than, you know, try to fight it. I think uh, we're known in, in the city as a, you know, kind of a, Great, uh, not just community-based uh, company, but our social engagement with the coffee community is uh, something that we love, you know, and, and uh, there's quite a few uh, areas of that, such as being the current president of the Oregon Coffee Board. You know, I work mm-hmm. with lots of other roasters in town and help we try to help each other out and and help out uh, the smaller businesses just getting in so that comes with a lot of expectations especially considering your position on the Oregon coffee board but also just your reputation um you you tell people what to do essentially like these are the best practices um for years and years and years right so sure. i imagine doing this is there's a lot of expectations that others have and then there's expectations that you have of yourself. Can you kind of compare the two? Like what were people kind of thinking like, Ooh, the, the coffee school is going to open a um, coffee bar. And then you're thinking, here's what we expect. <laughs> I don't know what you expect. Sure. So, you know, the interesting thing is that probably 90% of our students and, and uh, attendees of our workshops um are from all over the United States and also international. Uh, so we absolutely uh, encourage people to find the, the best fit for them when they're looking for a roasting partner. Uh, and I'd say maybe like one out of a hundred of our attendees actually end up working with Water Ave, and that's only if they're in Portland and if it's a good fit. You know, we because of our true passion to teach that, People really need to be confident in, you know, working with the best, uh, you know, again, vendors and partners. We're not there to try to use the school or, you know, encourage them just to work with with one company or another. We have probably a dozen roasters that send coffee every month, uh, no cost, uh, represented in the school regionally around the U.S. And uh, it's exciting for us to really find a great solution or at least help uh, in the brainstorm process for someone in, you know, Ohio or Florida or even here in Oregon to find the best partner. So we're sensitive around that, but it just feels like the benefit of being right in in the industry alongside our students and and those attending workshops has a a huge, huge advantage. Um, So it's, it's, again, I think it's that authenticity that, that uh, Bruce and I have just always loved that shines through. Uh, We've never had hidden agendas around our training or education. Mm -hmm. I mean, people would expect that the things you teach are on display in your coffee shop. Is that a huge uh, part of what you uh, focus on in terms of of running it, like making sure that you're actually, well, for lack of a better term, I guess, putting your money where your mouth is? Sure, absolutely. I think... uh, a lot of just inherent information that we're teaching comes from week to week real life experience. Uh, part of our class in the business portion, day one, we end it with a talk on ergonomic design and developing workstations. And the next morning, we reserve an hour for our group in the cafe to sit and watch our flow during one of one of our busiest times of the day um, to to kind of see you know how to set up. Um, you know, logical equipment placement and handle uh, customer rushes and peak hours. 
So uh, it's it's been a great you know tool to keep us really evolving as well in our training practice and uh, you know and what we're what we're able to share with those attending our workshops. Imagine it inspired some uh, you know version twos and you know you mentioned the evolution of what you teach like in the midst of running this business. I'm I'm guessing that there are some alterations you've made to the curriculum based on that experience. Absolutely. I think uh, every month we're, we're changing and evolving that curriculum. It's inevitable. I, when you're starting a coffee shop, no matter how much experience you have, obviously it's going to take a lot of work. Um, what would you say for you, in spite of all this experience, were the challenges of, of getting Water Avenue off the ground and going? Definitely, we were prepared for a slow, sustainable growth with Water Avenue. When we first opened, we were, you know, roasting in-house. We had a, we have about a 2,000 square foot flagship operation where it was about half roasting, half retail. Um, we're in an industrial area of Portland that uh, was just starting to see some mixed-use buildings and still, you know, there's a lot of freight and transportation in the area. It's, there's zero residential. Uh, so foot traffic, you know, is something that we talk about and co- retail coffee being a volume based business in the early days of water Avenue, we were planning and very excited to maybe be selling $500 a day worth of coffee and pastry, mm-hmm. uh, supplementing it a bit with a growing wholesale program. Uh, it was three years ago that we, uh, decided to, you know, move the roasting out of this space uh, and found a, you know, 5,000 square foot warehouse just blocks from our flagship, which was just an excellent, uh, you know, part of our growth. But we've built that retail business from, you know, $500 a day. And when we moved roasting out, we were able to add a kitchen, add, you know, quite a bit more profit generators. And now it's not uncommon to, you know, have a you know, $2,500 to $3,500 a day, but it took about eight years of sustained growth. So I'd say being prepared for the slow growth is something that came from our not only kind of less is more uh, startup with Water Ave, but being patient, knowing that, you know, it takes a lot more than just, uh, you know, a financial investment or, or startup to truly build that loyal clientele. And a lot of that has been shaped by our core values and our uh, pension for hospitality. We treat every customer that comes in as truly a gift because they could have walked, literally walked to probably 10 other coffee bars in the neighborhood. (laughs) So it's uh, it's really been a part of our training, but really this just the overall uh, values of, of, of our of our company and our our team that we just we just love our community and satisfying that social need. Well, talk more about your values, and I, I want to go back to this idea that we we're we we're touching on earlier. Uh, and it's one of the things that uh, you're known for is that collaboration and community focus. Like, what are those values that you're just talking about, and how does like uh, community and collaboration with your uh, neighborhood and your city factor into that? Sure. Well, our core values really have been, um, you know, a true evolution uh, over time, um, and it was probably a few years ago when when I really realized just how interested I was becoming in the culture around uh, kind of hospitality within business. And I kind of set out uh, to read as many books as I could um, and not just in the coffee industry, but uh, you know, obviously like a Danny Myers mentality Mm -hmm. set table. Um, Another book I read was uh, delivering happiness by uh, Tony Shea, uh, CEO of and uh, founder of Zappos. Um, but I started out kind of creating this longer list of, of values, and they've evolved a bit into kind of five key areas. 
that we focus on. Uh, number one, really being um, that we take care of each other, right? So we kind of joke that the customer comes second, but only because we strive to really have a team that supports and respects all coworkers, you know, our leadership, our founders. Um, and is, as a team, if we're not cohesive, we cannot best support our customers who are the lifeblood of our business. Um, kind of what it comes down to is we have each other's backs. By leading off with that value, it's really easy to explain to, you know, a staff member or anybody that if we're not getting along, if we're kind of arguing or not supporting each other, we're, we're in kind of violation of our top most important core value. Um, secondly, you know, is that, you know, uh, passion for delivering excellence. And again, every interaction we have with a customer is special. It's a chance for us to exceed expectations. Uh, that's definitely holds true through our retail as well as our wholesale partners. Um, and I think, you know, the evolution of understanding that empathy, care, integrity, and really a love to support our customers uh, really allows us to always strive to build long-term loyalty within our customers and our relationships. Uh, and you, you mentioned, you know, we've, we've been uh, featured as a company that really supports our community. Um, you know, social, uh, economic uh, responsibility is imperative to our success. Uh, success being somewhat relative. I mean, it's not just financial growth that drives me or most of our, you know, team, et cetera. It's really our mission to engage and support our community on a local level, but also a global level uh, that extends to, you know, obviously our, our farmer partners in different countries. Uh, again, with a focus on that social, economic, as well as environmental stewardship. Um, and then we try to be that catalyst to connect everybody in between from farm level uh, to our you know, retail coffee bars. We understand that we are responsible for that final step of this long chain of events that has brought this cup of coffee uh, into the hands of a, of a consumer. Um, our, our next core values built around that we embrace growth and change. You know, we've had a lot of evolution with Water Avenue. Uh, we can all as a team help drive change and look to solve problems while staying driven and focused. Kind of explained to everybody that every day we can expect something unplanned to happen. And it's the challenge that excites us. It's solving that, you know, problem or growing uh, the business uh, and our success is really due to hard work, but the ability to pivot and adapt and continue forward. And I feel that we've really been able to um, show some true leadership, you know, with our team, our staff, and really kind of build, uh, you know, a, a, a mindset uh, of kind of work-life integration with our team based around that love for growth and change. And finally, um, kind of our fifth core value is that we take care of ourselves, really realizing that you can never be too busy to take care of yourself. It's important to take time to stay healthy, both emotionally and physically. And, you know, we're not all at the gym every day. We're not, you know, uh, you know, eating raw <laughs> vegan diets, but it's more of a, a support to where if someone's struggling, if someone, you know, had an emergency or family issue or simply needs to take a mental health day to kind of chill out or, or you know, uh, take a break, we're all here to kind of support our team and share how we, um, you know, really find that kind of work-life integration in life. And then in addition to those values, you know, we really do express not only the importance in embodying certain qualities in the workplace, but we really want to be proud of our strong culture as we, we grow together. So things like optimism and warmth, uh, exceptional work ethic, uh, big ones, empathy for others and self-awareness uh, really allow us to kind of always be learning and growing, but you know, growing with integrity and really being ambassadors of 
uh, of Water Avenue here in Portland. Hmm. I, I like all those. Those are fantastic. Um, the theme of, of care. I mean, what well, you said, warmth. I just kind of get that overarching theme here of a caring and warm uh, disposition toward business in general and, and sure. doing life. Uh, it seems like that's the kind of thing that would definitely inspire that um, customer to come to your store uh, when they have the opportunity to go to many more and also to bring Water Avenue to them at events and things like that. And it kind of folds into that community aspect where um, you have an outward mentality built into your values, like looking out for others um, in your staff, but then looking out for the benefit of your neighborhood and your community. Like what, give me an example of what that looks like for you to build community through your shop. Well, I think there's multiple layers to that. Um, one that's a bit of a continuation of kind of what we were just talking about is um, when within our team, you know, I've really, you know, Bruce and I have really wanted to build Water Avenue as that authentic business. It's not built or based around our long-term re- history in the industry alone. Um, I don't really try at all to build Water Avenue around myself, but really base it around uh, having a great team. So part of that community in, here in Portland that isn't really quantified is that whenever we hire, you know, whenever we have a quarterly all staff meeting, when we welcome new employees on, I kind of, you know, just am pretty honest and I say, guys, it's very unlikely that everyone in this room is going to work at Water Avenue for the rest of your life. And let's strive to make the last three months of your time here as great as the first three. And I think it takes a little bit of pressure off and really allows for someone to have a a self-awareness when it feels like it's maybe time for a change or uh, another part of um, what I really strive to be. And it's taken a while to learn this is I really see myself a little bit more as a developer than just an employer. Um, it's exciting to me when someone, you know, uh, gets to either move into a new position within the company or, you know, has the self-realization that, you know what, I'm going to go, go out and try something else. And there's probably, you know, very few coffee companies in Portland where there may not be someone who had spent time here at Water Avenue and took their experience and really looked to grow it. So we're, we're pretty proud of that. It's just really being a pretty great fabric of Portland uh, coffee history and community and enjoy that. I think on a, on a direct community level, I mean, in a town with so much great coffee, you know, having good coffee doesn't separate us from our competition or another coffee bar. Uh, just having a, a cool, you know, interior of the coffee bar doesn't really differentiate us. So, it's that focus on the overall customer experience that truly extends, you know, way beyond uh, just that cup of coffee that we truly focus. So uh, it is the collaborations. It is the partnerships with not just restaurants or cafes in town, but with like the outdoor stores, with uh, other charities or like-minded, uh, you know, groups and places like, uh, Opal Creek Wilderness, they teach outdoor school to K through 12 kids and we're their official coffee partner. And we also do a couple, two to three times a year, we'll do an overnight, uh, you know, hike in three miles off the grid kind of retreat for our staff and just really embracing and integrating with the city of Portland and our, in our surroundings. Just, uh, not only shows to our customers that We are here for our community. We're here to help and make an impact how we can. But also, I think that allows people to identify with our business in a way that, again, is truly authentic and not just based around a product. How do you select which ones are right for you? Because imagine if you're a coffee shop, any coffee shop that opens up has requests for donations and partnerships. Hey, I want to make a coffee ice cream and I want to make a coffee beer. And it's kind of endless. And so... What do you do to choose the right people to partner with uh, for your company? 
Sure. So, yes, you're right. We do uh, get quite a few requests or, you know, people that say, oh, we should do a custom coffee blend. Here's my company in this other industry. And so it really just uh, starts with, you know, having someone into the shop and kind of ask, asking them why or, or even just trying to observe what led them to reaching out specifically to Water Avenue. Often we'll get requests that start with, uh, you know, hey, I love what you guys do here in the community. I was here at an event, et cetera. And we just want to make sure people are, you know, is authentically trying to do something because of, you know, the right reasons and because of their observation of us as a company, which is truly interesting because uh, similar to when people are, high, you know, applying to work here, um, often people say, I want to work at Water Avenue because, and they list without having maybe ever read our internal core values, some of those same, uh, you know, dialogues. And, and that's really exciting. That means that, you know, people are, you know, able to identify that. And that's important to us because it is a little bit unique, um, to our to our company when we're partnering with let's say a charity you know there are certain values we want to ensure and really identify with and you know we, we rarely say no to something like a donation for a silent auction at a middle school or something else but if we do those larger partnerships uh, like let's say with a company like portland gear uh, here in portland we really want to make sure it's based around uh, sharing a lot of those same values. Why is that? Why, why is that important that you share the same values for something that's uh, larger like that? I think we, you know, we really do celebrate, uh, you know, not just our city, but kind of a mentality based around a love for uh, keeping things, you know, uh, I mean, local. I know that sounds a little trite, but, um, having been a native Oregonian and having, you know, been, you know, watching Portland grow for almost, you know, 30 plus years. Um, there's something that is inherent to that, uh, true communal, uh, relationship. Uh, and this probably dates back thousands of years, but, um, the idea that we can control, and support relationships in a way that would be hard if just sending coffee as a as a product somewhere. Uh, I think there's something exciting about that. And we mentioned earlier, there's so many great coffee roasters in Portland. For us to maintain a five year, eight year relationship with a restaurant or you know uh, a wholesale account or a customer that comes in five days a week. That's how we can continue to build a sustainable business model. Hmm. So, and it's, it's a lot of work, you know, you, you've got a business still, you know, but you're taking on partnerships that require maintenance and upkeep. It, it, relationships do, you can't just check out when you partner with Portland Gear, as you said. Um, and is that one of the tough parts about doing this? And in, in, in what else might be a difficult part of embracing an outward service mentality where you're like, we're going to partner with our city in this way and it's requ- going to require actual labor hours on our part, but we're going to do it. But what's so tough about, what's the toughest part about that? Well, a, you know, a big part of Water Avenue is that we've, you know, maintained um, a full kind of flexible freedom. You know, we've, we're a hundred percent owned by just my dad and I, and we make decisions, um, often not just based around financial, uh, you know, reasoning. So we're, uh, really able to do things a little bit, uh, you know, unique. And we have a, a full-time kind of brand ambassador that's in charge of events, community engagement, and and managing all of our charitable donations you know and i think a lot of companies may not you know be able to you know carve out that that niche just for um that specific reason um i mean it really is truly more of a a a small company uh 
with a, you know, with a great focus rather than um, a mentality of grow or die. Uh, I learned, you know, kind of early on that Water Avenue to maintain an authenticity and to be a really special business doesn't necessarily need to be built around that growth model. You know, setting goals and achieving those is just as exciting as having an endless path of growth. So that's probably been one of the biggest kind of awakening moments for me is that, you know what, we are able to grow to a reasonable level and consider that a success. Um, I think often in, I think you got to go, Matt. I think your, uh, your train's here. <laughs> we are a block <laughs> from the train. So if you, uh, can endure the background noise, uh, it's just part of our daily life here on water app. Um, but that, you know, there's a book also I read that I think I'd recommend to any small business owner, um, and it's actually, it's called Small Giants by Bo Burlingham. And it's turned into an actual methodology for small business, a, an online community, a local community. But um, again, it's, it's, it's really showcasing uh, companies that are not just all small companies, but companies like Cliff Bar or, um, you know, uh, give some examples of musicians like uh, Ani DeFranco or people that, really just felt something inside them to not try to take on that big investment to continue to grow or to, you know, uh, grow to just try to sell your company someday and that be your success. Um, and in an industry where we see a lot of very great small businesses grow to, to, you know, be absorbed by bigger companies, I think, um, it's been just a really refreshing uh, mentality to follow and to set smaller goals and, and maybe even work, you know, without growing for a year. This last two years, uh, we saw a huge growth when we moved into our roasting facility and pretty much this whole year has been spent less on trying to grow, 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 but really work on our culture, uh, efficiency and building within our existing partnerships. Uh, it's kind of our way to be a, a bit of a, uh, a blue ocean strategy within a city with so many other roasters. So, hmm. yeah, that's a, a great book, by the way, blue ocean strategy. I have yet to read small giants. Um, but, uh, yeah, definitely people should get those too. But, um, I, I'm wondering, so what I'm getting from this is that you can just reinvest what you do have as you grow into projects that you might not have been able to do had you, you know, decided to open a second shop and, uh, or, or expand your shop or whatever it is, like some portion of your, your financial gain can be spent to afford a reinvestment into your community to make that possible. Uh, absolutely. You know, I think that, uh, retail is a way for us to showcase and share our product locally. Uh, we do have a downtown location that we opened uh, almost about a year and a half ago. Uh, we are always looking for great opportunity, but um, you know, being very patient and selective with when we look to you know move into a new neighborhood or open a, a retail, and that's probably you know been part of our slow growth model. Um, a big belief of mine is that if you are, you know, reacting quickly to, you know, life and change, um, that's often when you can make the biggest mistakes. I think that, you know, just my personality type is very methodical and really developing um, a slow and sustainable process to to growth and decision making. I like that. It, it feels like you can root down a lot more and have a more a solid foundation to launch when it's really, really obvious. Like it's the right time. Now you've got this great foundation and you can build higher with a, a bigger foundation. Absolutely. I think that's very true. Well, I want to know, so when when we're looking at our businesses and we're growing and we, we're looking to become a fixture in our cities, in our neighborhoods, and sort of 
not just take care of our people and our business, but also take care of our communities. Like what advice would you have to owners and operators who want to have a thriving business and also kind of pursue these community building partnerships and uh, collaborations, et cetera? Sure. Well, it's so important to know that our businesses only exist to satisfy a social need. We as, you know, startups or, you know, opening a new business. I mean, we have so many options and ideas and we can really create something that we're proud of. But if we, uh, do, if we make decisions based only on what we think is cool or what we want to be as a, you know, a coffee business, our consumers are going to be evolving around us. So, Again, we exist only to satisfy a social need. People are consuming coffee, thankfully, uh, every day. Um, one of the unique uh, advantages of a coffee bar is that we can have customers that come in every day of the week or five days a week. Uh, a lot of other food and beverage, that's not the case. You know, We don't go to our favorite restaurant every day. We don't go get ice cream or pizza every day. But coffee is that catalyst. Um, but then really not also only listening to, uh, what customers might be saying online or in reviews, but a true keen observation of customer patterns within your business will help, uh, direct and on a local level, you know, kind of be the litmus for what the community needs. And this can be, you know, you supporting, uh, through an uh, evolving menu or different, you know, uh, profit centers within your business to support the people around you, their needs, um, or building new customer bases by exploring how to support, you know, the community in other areas, um, you know, and, and be out there. I think that a big part of Water Avenue's growth has been that I've loved you know, I have a love of going and being a customer of other businesses and that could be restaurants or, you know, other you know outdoor stores or something else. And just realize that almost everyone you're always talking to outside of maybe your coffee bar is probably a coffee consumer. So, uh, or a consumer of anything that you offer in your shop. So okay. always just be, be that ambassador of, of your own business. Uh, and, don't be afraid to, you know, go out and be a customer in the in the community as well. Excellent advice. Um, final advice to owners and people running businesses: like, what are what are the keys to success? What are <laughs> what would you say are the the top practices from all of your to, just distill all of your experience from over the years into about like one minute? Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Now, like, you know, what, what are the practices that are just going to keep people on track? Sure. So everyone wants to be on trend or, you know, uh, on the forefront of what's going on in coffee. And I think that a big factor to consider is have a system in place, uh, to really breathe and be confident in the decisions you're making in your new business or your existing business. Don't be reactionary to change. Embrace it. Um, develop a methodology. Mitigate risk when making decisions. Understand your goals and impact. And then there's three key areas, I feel, that represent an overall experience. Um, I would much rather see business owners uh, eliminating any less than great experience rather than focusing on that hundred percentile experience every time. So that means don't pull six shots until you get the perfect one, uh, for one customer when there's 10 customers in line looking at you like, what in the heck is this guy doing? <laughs> um, but those three areas I'd say to focus on, and this, you know, this is primarily for retail, uh, coffee. Uh, absolutely, the environment that you create is uh, essential. So it's an essential part of what brings customers into your shop, what brings customers back to your shop. Um, refreshing your cafe with new plants or paint or materials 
lighting, et cetera, every couple of years is great. Um, but that's what people want to go to a space where they feel comfortable, excited. They want to bring friends, have places for groups to meet, et cetera. But focus on that environment. Uh, that includes music, lighting, you know, everything. Um, the next would be your menu. And this is where we're seeing a big evolution uh, in what are we offering beyond great espresso and coffee beverages that brings in a customer, not only that supports daily business, but also raises that ticket average so that we can continue to afford to give pay increases and, and pay more in rent, et cetera. Right. So things like, you know, manual brew methods or signature drinks, of course, but also what kind of food menu do you have? What do you have that complements your quality of your espresso program? And maybe what are, what are you doing on the retail side of things with curated retail items, gifts, obviously, you know, bags of coffee, but uh, home brewing methods, uh, you know, support that customer that does drink coffee at home as well. And finally, maybe the most important is the experience, and that's the hospitality experience. That's the customer interaction. And it's really important to know that in most coffee bars, there's not a separation of front of house and back of house. So your customer is fully integrated into the whole experience. That means that they can see things, smell things, uh, you know, overhear things in your cafe that uh, it should be part of a, a great uh, welcoming uh, overall hospitality experience. Um, those probably are the three main areas. I think also a couple other tidbits. Look outside of specialty coffee for inspiration. Watch and understand growth and technology. You know, look for patterns and like this ultimate chaos that we're trying to control that inspire your decision making. And, uh, you know, understand your local market better than anyone else. That's one of our only and biggest advantages over the chains or the bigger businesses and be inspired in your journey in coffee believe in authenticity integrity share your story uh, have mentors develop a confidence and competency around uh, what makes your business special how you differentiate um, and and set some core values that you believe in that instill passion in your team your customers uh, the education you provide not only to your staff, but those who come into your shop and really just be really excited that this industry is still young and you can be a pioneer uh, no matter where you live. Wow. <laughs> That's a really uh, great summation of some incredibly powerful um, practices and value. I mean, I, I feel like we are um, going to have our hands full but at the same time, these are things that you know, I've seen, you've seen them work so well, not just in your own business, but in the businesses of others. And our industry is becoming a lot more uh, attuned to these types of total experience focus, the hospitality to all people, your staff and your, your neighborhood. And I really feel like this has been a, a real powerful uh, talk today. So I, I really appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing. Uh, all of your experiences are just invaluable. So thank you. And how can people just stay in tune with what Water Avenue is doing, what you're doing? How can they reach out to you? Uh, absolutely. I am you know, always open for a great discussion. Um, my email, matt, M-A-T-T, at coffeebusiness.com is probably a great way to get a hold of me. Uh, if you're in Portland or visiting, you know, hit me up and I'd love to share a cup of coffee. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I appreciate you too, Chris. And I think you're, uh, you know, just passion for communication. And that is what keeps us all going. I'm so thankful to be able to share you know, what, 20 years in an industry um, and kind of boil it down to, you know, more than just, uh, you know, the coffee side of it. So um, find mentors wherever you can. They don't have to just be in coffee, um, but find find ways to stay inspired. I, I definitely know I have looked outside of coffee and try to kind of 
absorb and, and bring it back in and, and share with uh with people on a very small level here in the company but also i appreciate the ability to share my voice uh, with your listenership so i appreciate it well thank you for uh being one of our mentors today uh, and, and i truly am, am grateful so thank you man thank you chris it's been a fun journey well, I'm so thankful for the incredible advice delivered here from Matt and you know, drawing from his experience in the industry as both an entrepreneur and a teacher of entrepreneurs. Uh, it's quite a great position to be in, and um, we would do well to heed his advice in our businesses. The community and partnership concepts we discussed, I think, are so critical to your success, um, Getting having that outward-facing service mentality and um, you know, creating these values-based partnerships can really help you uh, not only get an edge, but add depth to your business overall. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed this discussion with Matt and you're able to apply these things in your cafe. So if you want to know more about Water Avenue Coffee or um, Bellissimo Coffee Advisors, you can go to wateravenuecoffee.com or um, onlinebaristatraining.com. And uh, yeah, subscribe for some uh, coffee training. Buy yourself a bag of coffee. Good to go. Lastly, I'd like to thank Matt for joining me on the show. Matt, thank you so much for your time, your wisdom, and and being so generous with your uh, knowledge in the coffee industry, your experiences building community and collaborations and successful coffee businesses is just invaluable. Thank you so much. Now, if you want the show notes for this episode, you can go to keystotheshop.com. And on the sidebar, there's a place for you to put your email address. And when you do that, you'll be signed up for the newsletter for Keys to the Shop. And that'll bring the show notes directly to your inbox. Of course, the main points and takeaways from each episode, as well as uh, links to all of the um, contacts, the websites, email addresses, and resources from each episode. So valuable. Uh, I definitely recommend that you sign up for that. So if you want to reach out to me directly, you can do so by emailing chris at keystotheshop.com, C-H-R-I-S at keystotheshop.com. I always love hearing from people listening to this show. Uh, If you have anything that um, you want to share with me that's both um, constructively critical, that's awesome. Um, if you, you know, feedback is always welcome. Of course, I want to make the show as good as I can for you. You know, if you have encouragements that you want to share, um, don't be shy. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, on the other end of the microphone, it's hard to know where the words are going and how they're landing in people's lives. And it's, it's always nice to receive some word that it's landed in the right place, you know. So, yeah, uh, if you have questions about things, too, I'd love to be able to help you. So just uh, chris at keys to the shop.com. Now, I hope you have an amazing week and that this conversation with Matt Boletto was helpful, encouraging, inspiring, and equipping for you. Go and apply some of the things that really stood out to you in this conversation uh, this week in your operation. And uh, as always, I hope that this episode has truly given you keys to the shop.